I shall leave our viewers to comment on that. Uh, tell me, uh, do you encourage your CELTA students to teach using Dogma? Do I encourage my trainees on CELTA courses to do Dogma? Um, well, yes and no. Um, I suppose behind the question is the idea that dogma is a, a teaching method or a teaching approach that you can sort of do dogma in that you perform classes with specific techniques or routines or things like that. And from that point of view, no, I don't encourage our trainees to do dogma lessons in that sense because I don't actually see dogma as a method and I don't even see it as an approach. Um, for me, dogma is an attitude, it is a mindset, and it is therefore actually not a pedagogic movement, primarily speaking, but a political one. Um, I think all education is fundamentally um, political. It's trying to affect social and personal change um, and so dogma ELT or teaching unplugged is essentially trying to change on a, an individual basis through teachers and then their experiences with learners society to make us as a whole I think um, more attentive to each other more reliant on ourselves less um, dependent on external supports or resources for our own uh, development and progression and um, I think therefore in that sense I don't encourage our CELTA trainees to teach dogma lessons but I do definitely try and encourage them to adopt a dogma mindset, a dogma attitude. Um, I want them to think dogmatically um, much more than I want them to act dogmatically. I don't know if that answers your question, but I hope it does. Whoa, that sounds deep. Okay, uh, for teachers who are rather sceptical of this approach, of this dogma approach, how would you convince them? What would I say to sceptical teachers? Um, well, I suppose I might say don't knock it till you've tried it. Um, very many people um, are unwilling to think kindly about things that are different from the way that they've always done things and I myself am no exception you know when I hear of new ideas I think what's the point in that uh, <laughs> and so I'm, I have a lot of sympathy for people who want to simply dismiss something like Dogma ELT but I would just say well why not just go and try it um, Go and watch it in action. Go and talk to people who are um, doing it. And try it yourself. And try it with a genuinely open mind and see what happens. You might be pleasantly surprised. Um, and if you're not, okay, that's fine. But then you've got a concrete reason for feeling sceptical about it. Um, don't just dismiss something out of hand without trying it. And for those who are hesitant, those who are afraid that they might not be able to pull it off, what's your advice? For those people who would like to try um, teaching unplugged but feel insecure in their ability to pull it off, I would say this. Um, what has caused us to have so little faith in ourselves and our learners that we feel that we cannot actually learn from them and from ourselves in the immediate interaction, the cut and thrust of classroom conversation. What has brought us to this? Um, what's brought us to the point where we think that to learn we need stuff, material, um, stuff preferably packaged in nice and shiny covers that we've paid a great deal of money for or our institution has paid a great deal of money for and who therefore doesn't invest in training anymore or other things that may actually bring much greater educational benefits or opportunities with them. What's brought us to this point where we feel that learning only is happens 
um, or can be seen as valid if it's been dictated in advance by a syllabus or by a curriculum that's been written by somebody who maybe hasn't been in a classroom um, as a teacher or as a learner for years. Um, what has brought us to the point where we feel that a lesson that has not been designed in advance and followed to the letter but rather um, unfolds as the time in the classroom um, moves on that the former kind of lesson is a real lesson and the latter kind of lesson isn't. What is it that's brought us to the point where teachers who are more willing to attend to their learners needs in that moment and to fuel um, the conversation that arises from those needs is seen as some kind of maverick, crank, or even worse, some um, lazy, um, unprincipled teacher. What's brought us to this point? I really do ask myself. Um, I'm not blaming anyone. I'm not blaming governments. I'm not blaming syllabus write, uh, writers. I'm not blaming publishers. I'm not blaming any of those large institutions for this. Because ultimately, we as individuals all have the choice. It's in our hands to choose how we want to work, how we want to live, and how we want to learn. Um, and so, I say to those people who maybe feel that they can't take the step, or feel concerned that if they take the step, they'll fall, trust yourself. Trust your learners for the moment it takes you to try it once. And believe me, you will rise with the occasion and the situation will be safe and the wave will carry your weight. To steal a metaphor from Dave Coulter there, who incidentally, if you're interested in starting to teach Unplugged, you should really follow his blog, languagemoments.wordpress.com. He's um, a very young teacher. He started teaching dogma very early in his career. And if you read his posts, you can really get a lot of inspiration for starting yourself. There are other people out there like him, like Ollie Bedell. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, like Adam Beale. Um, there are blogs of CELTA teacher trainers like Chia um, Soon Chong and uh, now Gemma Gardner. There are all kinds of people out there who are trying. It's about trying. The attempt is all. Don't worry about failure. There's not that much that can go wrong in 90 minutes that you can't repair if you really have to. So just take the risk. Try it. Because really, once you've tried it, you'll realise that there is no risk. There's never been any risk. Try it. Well, you heard Anthony. There's no risk, so try it. Uh, Anthony, just to round up this very, uh, very interesting chat, tell me, uh, when's your next conference and do you know what you'll be talking about? Well, I have just returned from the ITAS SIG Day in Zug, giving a talk and a workshop there, and I thoroughly enjoyed that. And my next conference is um, Glasgow, IATEFL 2012. Hope to see you all there, um, and if I'm lucky, if I get accepted, I'll be giving a talk about um, the seven deadly sins of ELT, as I've called them, um, a bunch of techniques and approaches to work in the classroom that, for one reason or another, have um, fallen out of fashion since the communicative approach rose um, to prominence back in the 80s. And I'm trying to basically rehabilitate some things that uh, were good about audiolingualism and grammar translation and things like that. So uh, if you're interested in some reactionary ranting from me, or if you want to get into a good old-fashioned pedagogic fight, then come along, assuming, of course, that they invite me. If they won't, I'll just be going to a lot of other equally interesting or more interesting talks and representing the teacher development SIG there. And um, please do come up and say hi um, if you see me there or at any other event because I'm usually too shy to go up to people and talk to them. So if you'd like to talk to me, please do come along and it will make my life a whole lot easier. Thanks a lot.
Well, Anthony, thank you very much for a very enlightening uh, 30 minutes or so. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm sure many of our viewers uh, will feel the same way. Okay, uh, so until the next interview, ta-ra! Thank you very much, Chu. I've really enjoyed answering these questions, and I'm sorry that I've gone on so long. And I hope that you and anyone who watches this has found it useful.